According to OPEC Secretary General Haytham Elgai, quote, electrification is often presented as oil's great rival. OPEC does not believe that energy sources are locked in a zero-sum game, end quote. OPEC assumes that the future will be like post-World War II, when new electric technologies like hydro and nuclear helped meet rapidly growing demand instead of displacing hydrocarbons. Electricity had not yet become a disruptive innovation, that is, a new technology capable of changing consumer preferences. Hydro and nuclear did not scale up, and many end uses like autos and furnaces were not economical to electrify. Clean energy technologies, however, can achieve massive scale at a much lower cost on both the supply side, solar, and the demand side, EVs and heat pumps. Oil finally has a real competitor. For example, Bloomberg NEF predicts that electrifying transportation, cars, trucks, delivery vans, buses, bikes, and trikes, will lead to peak global road transport oil demand by 2026 or 2027. That's significant because global road transportation consumes almost 50% of crude oil. The takeaway here is that the oil and gas industry's worldview prevents it from recognizing the threat to its business model. Failing to recognize a disruptive innovation is why Blockbuster and Kodak Eastman failed. Oil and gas companies are treading that same path. Industry incumbents like electric utilities and oil companies have wielded enormous market and political power for decades to advance their businesses. Now they are often wielding that power to protect themselves from the clean energy disruptive innovations. When faced with disruption, incumbents have three choices. One, pivot to a new business model. For example, Danish oil and gas became Orsted, the world's leading wind company. Two, it can re-engineer its existing business model. Several oil companies, most notably UK-based BP and Suncor in Canada, tried and gave up on this approach. Three, incumbents can double down on the status quo. This is a choice of almost all North American oil companies and many utilities. They are using their clout to impede climate and industrial policies while trying to insulate themselves from new competitors. The lesson for the United States and Canada is that incumbents cannot be relied upon to lead change. Others must lead while incumbents adapt to the new realities of the energy transition. Almost every oil and gas producing nation hopes that its industry will be the last barrel standing. The problem is that most international producers are competitive at low oil and gas prices. Will national oil companies, whose owners depend on those revenues to run governments and provide social programs, simply fold their tent? When will low cost OPEC producers open the taps and take back market share, putting higher cost North American producers out of business? Instead of hoping for the best and planning for the worst, they are planning for the best and ignoring the worst case scenarios, hoping that they will be one of the lucky ones once oil and gas consumption begins to decline. The moral of Mum's admonition is that oil and gas jurisdictions, especially those in the United States and Canada, should plan now for the coming low carbon economy before it's too late. Every previous energy transition was commodity led. This one is technology-led. That means the transition away from fossil fuels to clean energy technologies is governed by a different set of rules. This course describes some of those rules, many of which are taken from technology adoption theory and the research of energy transition scholars and think tanks. Think of them as tools, lenses through which you can understand the energy stories we hear in the news media and on social media. Together, they are a toolkit to better understand a complex and confusing process that takes place over decades, not years, and which the global energy system is only part way through. A final thing to keep in mind is the role in this energy transition of expanding consumption from a growing, richer global population. The oil and gas forever worldview thinks that because of that demand, clean energy will satisfy new demand but hydrocarbons will continue to grow for decades before plateauing, then only slowly declining. But the futurist electric worldview argues that the lower cost 
and much higher efficiencies of electric technologies on both the supply and demand sides will largely push fossil fuels out of the global energy system by mid-century. This course leans toward the future as electric for two reasons. One, the intense innovation in clean energy technologies seems likely to continue for several more decades or more. Clean energy is competitive with fossil fuels now and will only become more competitive in the near to medium term. Lower cost and higher efficiency suggest the new technologies will eventually push coal, oil, and gas out of most markets. Two, as researchers like Dr. Doyne Farmer argue, once dynamic new technologies like solar and batteries pass their inflection point, their mass diffusion is inevitable. The recent acceleration of adoption of those technologies around the world makes a 2050 global energy system still dominated by fossil fuels seem unlikely. The more likely outcome is an electric future. Congratulations for completing this course. Please watch for future training courses as we explore the transformation of the global energy system.